thank you for the introduction. So I'm Sandy, I'm a dietitian with the uh, Santok Seng Hospital. Um, so today my topic is on healthy eating to reduce your risk of gastric cancer. Um, please bear in mind that um, this is for um, prevention. So it's also meant for uh, people who have had um, gastric cancer but have since uh, recovered. Um, so this is actually not a rec these are recommendations not for people who are currently having gastric cancer or are undergoing um, treatment. So for those, uh, you will require like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, advice from a dietitian to have some personalized um, recommendations based on your current conditions. So today we'll be talking um, about the risk uh, factors, uh, which some have been mentioned by Dr. Asim um, and Dr. Wong. Um, and we will follow up by the recommendations. I will address some commonly asked questions for cancer prevention, as well as to do a summary of the talk. So um, this talk is guided by the guidelines uh, from the World Cancer Research Fund International um, and the American Institute for Cancer Research. Um, these expert organizations are constantly doing um, update projects uh, and the latest update for this is actually uh, earlier this year. So, um, risk factors which will actually increase uh, factors which will increase your risk of gastric cancers um, is alcohol intake, high salt or preserved foods, processed meat, being overweight or obese, um, having grilled or barbecued meat little or no fruit intake. So those in bold are actually those with stronger uh, evidence. And the one that will actually reduce your risk of gastric cancer is having um, increased citrus fruit intake. Sorry. Okay, so for recommendation one, which is to limit alcohol intake, um, consumption of more than 45 grams of alcohol, which is equivalent to four and a half standard drinks per day, is likely to increase your risk of stomach cancer. So a standard drink is actually equivalent to 10 grams of alcohol. Um, the Health Promotion Board recommends women to limit to one standard drink, uh, whereas men is allowed up to two standard drinks a day, but that is only if necessary. So um, a standard drink or 10 grams of alcohol is equivalent to a can of uh, 330 ml of uh, beer, um, which is also similar to 175 ml of wine because of the higher alcohol content. Follow and that is also similar to 35 ml of um, spirit, which, is, which contains 40% of alcohol content. So recommendation two, which is to limit salt intake, so salt, as we know, is necessary for um, human health and life, but at much lower levels than what we usually consume. So high salt intake damages the lining of stomach, uh, which will increase the uh, growth of Helicobacter um, pylori growth, uh, which was also covered earlier on, and that increases the risk of uh, stomach cancer. So the Health Promotion Board actually recommends less than um, 5 grams of salt per day. However, um, an average Singaporean adult consumes double of that amount. So the sources of um, salt mainly come from this. However, the food sources which contains high salt content mainly are those which are added to food. Um, these are commonly known as condiments such as salt, MSG, soy sauce, um, whether light or dark. Uh, oyster sauce or even instant pastes, paste. Um, and the other group of food with high salt content will be those that are processed. That is your um, sausages, your meat, um, salted fish, or the kiam kiam thai, and um, as well as those um, like potato chips or canned food. So how to actually limit or reduce your salt intake? So first is to choose unsalted food products. So uh, fresh is best. To read labels carefully, to avoid, uh, which is uh, to avoid foods with salt, sodium, or soda um, included as part of the ingredients. 
to avoid salty foods and condiments. Um, rule of thumb is always to taste before adding any condiments and to increase the use of uh, natural low sodium seasonings or ingredients such as garlic, herbs, spices, um, ginger, onion. Okay, so of course, um, as Ivy has asked a few times just now, whether you all have had uh, your breakfast, what you all like to eat, um, so dining out in Singapore is inevitable, but if you do have to, so the way to reduce your salt intake is actually to ask for less um, gravies or sauces and to avoid finishing the soup when you have soup noodles. Okay, so recommendation three, which is the limit um, intake of processed meat. So some examples are stated earlier already. Um, such as sausages, bacon, ham, meatballs, hamburger, uh, hamburger patties, commercially made. Okay. So the use of excessive salt and um, nitrite or nitrate, uh, which are added to preserve um, processed meat, are associated with higher risk of stomach cancer. And so, as mentioned earlier, the rule of thumb, if possible, is to use fresh ingredients. So we have come to the uh, fourth recommendation, uh, which is to maintain a healthy body weight. So increased body fatness it also increases the risk, it's known to increase the risk of cardiac cancer. So cardiac is actually uh, the area where food first enter um, the stomach through the food pipe. So in order to achieve a healthy body weight, it um, has to come with a balanced diet and physically active lifestyle. So we use the body mass index, or commonly known as the BMI, um, to know whether, because that gives an indication of uh, the body fatness in a, in a person. So a person with BMI between 18.5 and 24.9 is uh, within the healthy weight range. So my healthy plate is developed by the Health Promotion Board to provide an easy to understand um, visual representative of uh, what a healthy and balanced diet should look like. So these two can be used to help you uh, remember and practice healthy dietary habits to help with weight control as well as to prevent chronic diseases. So the first part of the healthy plate um, you can see on the right is to fill your plate with um, fill half of your plate with fruit and vegetables and a quarter of your plate with whole grains food followed by a quarter of your plate with meat and other alternatives. So water is best so that um, to minimize the unnecessary calories that you may obtain from sugar sweetened be beverages and to increase the use of healthier monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, also commonly known as the healthier oil, with um, um, the health, health, healthier choice, a symbol on it. Those are usually the ones uh, who are, which are more ideal, um, but overall to still use in moderation in your cooking. So as mentioned earlier, um, having a balanced diet needs to be coupled with um, physically active, uh, a physical activity for uh, healthy lifestyle. So the Health Promotion Board recommends for adults to aim for 150 minutes of um, physical activity a day, a week, sorry. So that is equivalent to about 30 minutes a day for five days. Okay, so um, fifth recommendation, which is to limit uh, barbecued or grilled meat. Um, grilled meat in the sense that those with charred um, portion of it, so these are um, recommendations to limit those kind of um, meat products. So it's because meat cooked at um, high temperature can contain or and lead to production of cancer-causing compounds. However, um, as mentioned earlier, this is the one without the bold um, fonts. So because the evidence on the association between greater consumption of barbecued meat and risk um, of cancer, stomach cancer is still limited. But that doesn't mean that you can continue to spam and eat all you want. Okay, so um, the sixth recommendation, which is to increase your fruit intake, especially uh, the citrus fruit. Um, citrus fruit are things like the more acidic ones, like your oranges, lime, lemon, grapefruit. Yep. 
So um, it was observed that um, there was a decreased risk of stomach cancer at fruit intake of about two serves a day. Okay. This could be due to the bioactive components or antioxidants um, contained in fruit, uh, which have protective effects, but it could also be a combination of various factors like fiber from fruit. Okay. However, evidence on the association of low consumption of fruit with increased risk of cancer is limited. And likewise, evidence on increasing citrus fruit intake with reducing risk of stomach cancer is limited as well. Okay, then you all must be wondering what about the vegetables that we have mentioned um, quite a few times today. Okay, so um, likewise for fruit, that doesn't mean that since the evidence is limited, then you can go about without having your fruit. Okay, because as mentioned in the healthy plate, actually fruit and veg having adequate fruit and vegetables um, intake a day um, is part of a healthy and balanced diet. So from the health promotion board again, um, it is recommended to have two serves of fruit and two serves of vegetables a day as part of the healthy dietary habits. Okay? So one serve of vegetables is not just one stock. Okay? We are looking at about three quarter cup cooked leafy or non-leafy vegetables. Or if you do eat raw salads, it's about one and a half cup of um, the raw salads. Okay, this make up, uh, this make, will make up a cup, uh, a serve. So a day, we recommend uh, two serves a day. For fruit, something which makes up about a fee size will be uh, a serve. So a small or medium apple, pear or orange, or a handful of uh, grapes, longans, lychees, okay? Or it can be a wedge of papaya, honeydew, um, or pineapple. So a day, we also recommend two serves. So not to replace fruit with vegetables, because they have different minerals and vitamins um, components, so we do encourage to have two of each a day. Okay. So I'll quickly address some uh, commonly asked questions uh, for cancer prevention. So um, organic foods are commonly asked in the sense like whether it's better than non-organic food. So organic foods are alternatives to foods which are conventionally grown. Uh, using chemical pesticides or herbicides. So they are usually more expensive and less available um, in the market. However, no research has actually shown that organic foods are more effective in cancer, uh, reducing cancer risk. And the nutrient contents for organic or non-organic foods are actually similar. So in conclusion, organic foods are actually no better comparing to non-organic foods. So, should any of you start going to, you know, vegetarian diet? So that's one of the commonly asked questions. So vegetarian diets are rich in plant-derived um, plant nutrients that are believed to help reduce cancer risk. However, if vegetarian foods are prepared unhealthily, that can also um, increase the fat or sugar content. So it's actually important to have adequate protein intake from meat or other alternatives as part of a healthy balanced lifestyle. Sorry, balanced diet. So um, that is still encouraged. Okay, so antioxidants. So what about consumption of antioxidant pills? Will that lower the risk of stomach cancer or cancer in general? So antioxidants are chemicals that block the activity of free radicals. So these free radicals are actually things that are formed naturally in the body and may have the potential to cause um, cell damage leading to cancer. So it has been suggested that consuming um, antioxidants, that will actually reduce cancer risk. However, there's still no strong evidence about um, consumption of antioxidants with lowering, lowering the risk of um, cancer. So therefore, um, it's not something that we uh, like will recommend. Okay, so to quickly summarize, to maintain a healthy lifestyle, um, good dietary habits like having enough fruit and vegetables intake while limiting excessive salt or preserved foods and alcohol intake, coupled with um, being, physical, uh, being physically active to maintain a healthy body weight, that is what that will help to reduce your risk of stomach cancer. Thank you.